And the last design we're going to talk about is the alternating treatments and multi-element. Now, these designs uh, are pretty cool. I actually have done uh, a little bit of my own research on these or, and read the literature quite a bit. Uh, and it's definitely an interesting design, especially for those of you interested in uh, functional analysis and uh, problem behavior. So let's, let's jump more into it. So essentially what an alternating treatments does, it compares two conditions to determine which impacts behavior more. Now that doesn't necessarily, so you notice when I say alternating treatment, uh, that means it could also be behavior that you're looking to increase and you wanna know which has a greater effect. And you would alternate uh, the order in which the treatment is delivered and we'll take a look at some graphs uh, that'll demonstrate that. Uh, and you wanna see which one uh, does a better job of changing the behavior. It also has a variation that's pretty exclusive to the multi-element design, uh, that's uh, pretty exclusive to functional analysis, sorry, uh, called the multi-element design. And it's most commonly seen in functional analysis, functional analysis variations such as the ISCA, uh, or when combining design elements. So in an alternating treatment, the control condition may or may not be present. Uh, in functional analysis, the control is usually a player and a loan condition, but when you're just testing two things, uh, it might, there might not be a baseline because we already know that both work. Um, a minimum of one other treatment besides the original is always required. And overall, with this design unique to it, uh, level is the one that you're going to primarily be looking at. So you'll conduct all the sessions that you need for your data, you graph your data, and then you're going to be looking at level mostly to determine which is the most effective. Uh, in the multi-element design, uh, which is exclusively, uh, well, I don't want to say exclusively, but almost exclusively used for functional analysis. It provides a comparison of each test condition uh, with a comparison to a control. Now, when I say test, remember uh, the reinforcement for behavior is either social positive, social negative, automatic positive, automatic negative. But we developed unique FA test conditions, such as attention, uh, alone, escape, tangible, uh, to compare against something like a play. Um, but what you're doing is you're comparing all those test conditions, each one against the control, not against the other test. Uh, and what you're looking for is level across time. So in a traditional analog assessment, like uh, similar to what Awada and colleagues developed, uh, you would have 10 sessions per condition. Uh, let's say you have four conditions, three tests and a control. You would do all 40 sessions and then you would look to see which ones have a noticeably higher level than the control. So the benefits of either of these is good to, it, the alternating treatment is it's good when you wanna know what works better. In functional analysis, it's good to know the function of the behavior, um, but you have to be careful to control for a predictability pattern. So you don't want the person to know what condition is gonna be used on any given day because then they'll behave accordingly. Um, but we do know that the multi-element design specific to FA uh, is the, the gold standard for treatment of problem behavior. So we like using it. Uh, and those results provide further guidance, which is really, uh, really good for those that are seeking to treat problem behavior and don't necessarily know what's maintained. Now here's a sample uh, multi-element design. You notice that there's a no consequence condition with a bunch of squares, and then there's a demand condition with a triangle and then an attention condition with the circles, and they're measuring vocal stereotypy in this particular graph. Uh, you notice that none of these are noticeably different than the no consequence condition. So then um, you would likely say that this is either inconclusive or maintained by automatic reinforcement. In this case, it's likely automatic because of the, uh, the variability in the vocal stereotypy in each condition, there's not really a detectable pattern. Right. But do you see how what you're doing is you're comparing everything to the no consequence and you're looking for separation. So that is in a nutshell, a very brief uh, video on the alternating treatment and multi element design. Thank you for checking this out. Uh, thank you for watching these. If you made it all the way to the end, I tried to keep them really, really brief. Uh, but again, my email is sruiz at uwf.edu. And you can always find at Ruiz ABA on Facebook. I'm hoping to post more videos and other things uh, as time goes on. So thank you so much. Have a great day, uh, and hopefully uh, you check out at Ruiz ABA on Facebook.